Hi, welcome back. I'm having the pleasure again to join with uh, Mark Taylor here, and we're going to continue to talk about the wonderful propolis. And now, not just any propolis, but exactly, red propolis. A special red propolis, which we have a heart for it. So, Mark, um, what can you tell us about this red propolis? Well, red propolis is the new kid on the block. It's probably the rarest and newest uh, discovered propolis, if you can call it at that, discovered. Obviously, the bees have known about it for a while, but humans are fairly new to it. Uh, in fact, you know, your best friend, Alessandro, one of the founders of Natura Nectar, was responsible for the discovery of the plant that is the source for the red propolis that bees use. Uh, it's the Albergi plant, comes from a very small area in the northeast corner of Brazil, the mangrove swamps, coastal area, so it's very remote, very pristine, uh, very clean, and it is actually a red resin that oozes from this Dalbergia plant, and Dalbergia is actually the first legume that has been so sourced as a, as a uh, it is the first legume that's been found to be a source for propolis. Absolutely, and to be honest with you, that was the reason why we created this company. And I got so fascinated by the story of Alessandro, by his adventures with the scientists, <laughs> you know, doing these scientific expeditions to find uh, the, the origin where the bees go to to collect the propolis. If it wasn't by the red propolis, probably the true nectar wouldn't be here today. So that's really, really exciting for us. And I think you have good reason to be exciting because while it's a new, you know, it's a new discovery, the research on it looks extraordinarily promising. So I think the next 20, 30 years are going to be quite bright for red propolis as that research explores more of what's in it as well as more of its applications. So it just shows up every day in the number of but the scientific papers coming out, you know, Absolutely. from different universities around the world. So that's really, really cool. So what would be, Mark, some of those interesting, exciting compounds that are coming out uh, with red propolis now, uh, different from what we saw before with green and brown? Well, we're still exploring that. So, you know, tomorrow there may be a new interesting and exciting Every compound day, right? that we don't even know about. But the two newest ones are probably uh, Vestitol and Neo-Vestitol. Uh, really promising flavonoids, and that's one of the areas that I think red propolis really stands apart from the other types of propolis. It's the range and number and diversity of types of flavonoids that are in there. And we've seen an amazing increase in the amount of research on flavonoids in general for virtually every health issue you can imagine. So flavonoids are kind of the hot compound right now, I think, in natural products research. And red propolis, I think, shows a lot of promise in that area because of those flavonoids. Uh, and there's some unique qualities to them. You know, they're isoflavonoids that makes some really possible, you know, promising benefits, particularly for women and hormonal issues. Uh, it was studied to have the highest boric value of anything by the by a U.S. government agency. Uh, unfortunately, they took down that testing procedure, Correct. but we yes. still have the results of it. But it tested higher than clove, turmeric, which is very popular right now, acai, and other berry. In fact, I think it's three times or more higher uh, than acai is. Um, auric is a lab measure, and they've also tested it as far as its antioxidant value by a much more relevant clinically uh, test, which is the D DPPH, yeah. uh, and it's shown to have, I think, an 84.3% uh, reduction in free radical fighting. So very, very potent anti antioxidant with, I think, a lot of promise just along those lines. Yeah. That's very important, huh? very, very important. And you know something? Uh, we hear a lot about flavonoids, that, just as you were saying here. Uh, is there any uh, thing about cardiovascular health that we can associate with these flavonoids that we find in red propolis? Absolutely. I think flavonoids is a category that you can almost associate directly with uh, cardiovascular health. So if a food is rich in flavonoids, it probably has some cardiovascular benefits. And that's what we're finding in the red, in the red propolis. There's an old maxim uh, or practice in, in traditional herbalism called the doctrine of signature. Uh -huh. And the idea is that you can look at the plant or the substance and get some idea what this is about. Well, red propolis is red, red blood cardiovascular, so maybe there's actually some accuracy in this regard. But th you know, that being said, there's a tremendous amount of research. There's a growing body of research that supports healthy cardiovascular functioning. It can improve a number of different measures of cardiovascular health. Uh, extraordinarily promising in that regard. It's been shown to improve cholesterol metabolism. It actually encourages the cholesterol movement out of the cardio, out of the circulatory system into the liver, where the liver can break it down and dispose of it if there's too much cholesterol. So right now, again, extraordinarily promising, and I think we'll see more and more research in the next couple of years regarding its benefits for cardiovascular health in particular. And as this research come up, of course, we're going to be talking about it because absolutely, you know, it's surely going to be good stuff for us. And uh, Mark, you previously have shown that green propolis is good for men, right? Right. And you kind of gave us a hint in the beginning of this segment that women is also 
covert here. So how is that? Well, you know, propolis doesn't discriminate between male and female. Isn't that so there's great? something good for everybody here. <laughs> but these isoflavonoids are phytoestrogens, and right. basically what they act is they, they bind with estrogen receptors in the cells, and they block the so-called bad estrogen that may be binding those cells, creating the problems that can be associated with that. So you see a range of possible applications and benefits in that. In fact, Natura Nectar created their first product, Ease Femin, uh, with this regard, and I know you're going to do a later show where you're going to explore in detail some of the research about that. But I think there are a number of studies to suggest that for overall hormonal health, particularly for women, uh, in a number of different situations, that I, I think the red propolis shows some real promise in that regard. And hormonal health for men as well. For, for yeah, absolutely. It, it's probably, and I think we'll find out, it has some endocrine support and an endocrine tonic, so it's probably going to balance the endocrine system. I'm sure we're going to find that there's some healthy blood sugar support in this, you know, along with a healthy diet as well. So. Uh, yeah, it, again, we're really at the tip of the iceberg exploring what these benefits are, and it's really intriguing. You know, every week or so you come out and you see this new study on red propolis where they found a new compound, a uh, mix of compounds, you know, a new application, a new use for it, and yeah. I think we're just going to continue to see that uh, year in, year out. Absolutely. Well, I think we need to close, and I, I want to make sure that, you know, uh, is there, we, we talk about if there is anything in red propolis for us, baby boomers, right? You know, this is... Absolutely, we have a lot of self-interest in this We regard, need right? a lot. <laughs> we need to improve a lot of areas in our health. So. Now, this is an area of personal interest to me. I actually plan to live to be over 20 years old, so anything that may help that quality of life and that longevity, I think I'm really intrigued by. Right. And this is my prediction, but it's founded and grounded on the research on the chemistry of the red propolis. I think it is really gonna have some benefits for quality of life as we get older. You know, theoretically, maybe some longevity aids and things to it. It seems to work on that micro level down to the DNA and cell structure and mitochondria. And it seems to work on that larger systemic, you know, we talk about cardiovascular health, immune health, overall health of the body, just functioning of the cells and the, and the organism as a whole. And I think it shows a lot of intriguing promise in that regard. In fact, I'd make a prediction that we'll find out in the next five to 10 years that it's a more valuable anti-aging remedy than resveratrol is. And it'll be more valuable, more effective, safer, uh, and have a wider range of benefits with it. Absolutely. So this is all very exciting stuff. We now, by now, we cover the three major types of deep propolis in Brazil. Again, you know, it, it's never late to say again that Natura Nectar really brings the deep propolis from Brazil exclusively from Brazil because we believe that's where the purest and the highest quality deep propolis is. And um, we will continue our series of videos. You are welcome to watch. To watch the next ones and we're going to start exploring uh, not only the propolis but the products that we have based on propolis so thanks for watching again.